Eastern and another episode of working on the railway or messing about on the railway. Anyway, it's hard to believe that it's been six weeks since we lifted up the rails and pulled down the old time dock station. And as you can see, life is slowly beginning to return back to time dock. And if you look Mostly, cat. the station cat has returned. So life is slowly coming back to normal. But where are all the workers? Seems like nothing's been done for the last week. Gonna have to investigate this. I might have guessed. Didn't take me long to figure out where everybody is. They're all down here at the pub. Come on you lot. Get back to work. Right you are Mr Easton. We well, yeah, I will be there in a jiffy. Come on we've got a lot to do. Yeah, talking about lock to do, let's head over to the bench. Right, before we get stuck into the part 7 of the station build, I just want to talk about a few accessories that I've been collecting. Um, a few of you have asked about the flashing LEDs a while back. Um, God, that was a long time ago when I did the um, Yorkshire police box. And here they are. You get these off E and Bay, and you get, I think there's about 20 in that packet for about a tenner. Actually, flashing LEDs, but you don't get resistors. You're going to have to look up uh, manufacturer's guidelines for the resistors, but they will need a resistor. But that they are, they're, they're quite uh, reasonably priced. Over the last few months, I've been collecting the new range of. Backman um, figures. Um, they are uh, about 12 quid um, a box or a packet and they are lovely in their detail. Um, you could pass a few of these off as characters if you like. Here we could have Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Quite easy look like them. And uh, there we have her director of the railway and uh, all the rest you can make up whoever you want as characters but they are a lovely set that's the Edward Wardian passengers and here we have post-war era figures set A and set C um, yet again some lovely looking figures I don't think I have to touch them at all then go straight on the line. And uh, the set C, we have a couple of uh, mod, a uh, couple of rockers there, um, some staff, some uh, yeah, army figures. Uh, yeah, so yet again, nice set. Don't have to do anything with them. And then we have the steam era signal staff. Now, as you know, I've still got a few. 
signal boxes that need kitting out and uh, they'll come in handy for future builds. I know we haven't got a station building yet but I want to make a lift. I've not built one before and um, and photographs of really really old lifts are hard to come by especially from the 1920s, 30s or even before that. And this is a, a recently refurbished one I found on the internet. Um, obviously it's got modern lighting in but it's got the Constantina type doors. If you look here to one side, so if you pull that across it, Constantina, uh, like we have on the back door there. But there's one thing missing. This is not old enough. Because really, if we want to go even further back to, in time to the late, or oh, the very late 1800s, early 1900s, you'd find a lift that would have this type of grill plate doors so although and it will have two sets of doors it have this on the inside and the pull across um, girder plate um, doors that you've just seen which will close it off um, and the staff would use these on the old railways now I have seen a Pathy's newsreel film where I saw a porter pushing a trolley into a lift and I thought wow wouldn't that be a great addition to the building like I said I haven't got a building yet but if I can pre-make the lift I can make the building to fit the lift it's a bit rather wrong way around but um, <laughs> That's what uh, I like to do. So I've got an idea of, of how to do this. Right, so I've done an on-site survey to where this lift is going to go and I've taken a couple of measurements. It's going to be between 35 and 37 millimetres wide and 45 millimetres deep. So basically I'm just going to make a mesh cube and put one set of doors on one side that's closed and on the other side of the lift it's going to be open and uh, so we'll, we'll be able to put something in it. Um, as you can see there with the pencil lines going across, there's a couple of steel girders and braces with a couple of motors either side which will pull the lift up and down. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this turns out. And obviously on one side we're going to have the concertina doors and the iron doors which will be on the inside which you'll see from one side and the other side will be open with the doors open so that's that's the, the plan and the material I'm going to use to make the lift is this mesh um, you can pick it up anywhere and uh, I have used this before um, you can get this probably from a garage or you can get it off well I got this from a model store but I can't remember where I got it from what the model store was called and I have used this before over at Tyne Dock and I've used it for on the um, colliery as well for the gates on the colliery so now I'm going to use this for the lift so for the sizes of the lift I've used these um, baggage cars um, put them side by side and it works out about 30 2 to 34 millimeters and um, for the depth I'm going to stick with my 45 millimeters and it still leaves room for the driver or the porter to operate the lift and um, that's what I'm going to go with just using these uh, I'm not sure what make they are oh hold on there is a manufacturer's mark on the bottom Oh, these are the Pico ones. So they're the Pico ones. And I've also got a set of really old Triang ones. And these will be the ones that will be on the Tyne Dock station. So you've put them side by side and it works out at the same measurements. Obviously these need a little bit of work to them. To them. Yeah, they need painting up and bring it into the um, to 
21st century because they are quite old these old Duplo dinky toys from Meccano there you go very rare but uh, they still look well still 176 scale so with all that taken into account it's time to cut our mesh now for the two sides and the front that's closed it works out at 110 millimeters so I shall mark that and then cut that and I'll just use a pair of scissors to cut that right so I've cut the mesh and the next thing you want to do is work out the height so we just put a figure in there and then we'll just go about five or six millimeters above his head and then that gives us the height for the lift and it works out roughly about 30 millimeters As for folding it's quite easy, just set the rule against the square at 30mm and then just push it around the square edge. To make sure it's flat, put the rule inside and then just push that against there. That should make that a nice square edge like so so we've got more or less the box and a base so now that we've got our box folded the next thing I'm doing is adding some 2 mil right angle styrene strip um, just super gluing it onto this mesh now it does take a while to go off so you've got to be really patient with it sticking to the mesh. Right so that's the start of the actual lift itself um, and then we just carry on adding the styrene strip around the base and around the top. Um, the stuff I'm going to use for that is 10 40, 0.1 by 20, 0.25, and that would then just create the box. Moving on a little bit, um, most of the framework. Is, is done the sides and I've put a top brace in to keep the walls apart um, so yeah so that's almost there I'm now working on the door and I'm using some 10 by 30 polystyrene strips it's quite thin and that's gonna go in there like that and create lots of lines um, so it looks like the Constantina door is shut uh, and then the only thing to do is stick a little tiny bit of um, plastic card in there with a handle on it so it looks like it's been closed too I'm just using super glue for the strips um, leaving it long so I can just trim it back once it's, it's glued So I'm just putting them in there, roughly about a millimetre and a half apart. About there. And then we'll just wait for the glue to go off and then we can just trim the excess back. Right, so that's the gate done. 
and I've added some bracketry on the top there for um, lifting the lift up and down and the next thing I want to do is add a handle to go in that corner there because you will probably actually see it um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use some 0.5 brass wire I'm just going to fold that uh, 2 mil, then 3 mil, then 2 mil again and drill a couple of holes into this uh, 0.25 strip and then cut it and then glue that onto the inside so it looks like we've got a handle so it's quite simple really to, to do this so I'm going to make the handle 5mm in length so what we'll do we'll do two of these because the other roller shutters will need a handle as well so if we just mark it 1.5mm there and 1.5mm there do the same there 1.5, 1.5 and drill four holes we'll just fold this wire now luckily uh, these are 3 mil wide at the end so just case of bending the wire to suit the holes and we'll just super glue this wire into the holes and then as you can see I made a spare one and it was like th threading thread through an eye of a needle quite a tricky little job so I shall now cut these off this strip and glue them to the gate if you look deep into the lift you can see the handle which is glued on right there where the fingers pointing and um, I've added two um, control panels for the lift one that side and one that side so it doesn't matter which side uh, you go into the lift you can operate the lift as long as the doors are closed obviously but there you go so that's where we are there's still more to do I want to add some cross braces from there to the center and back to give it some more strength and a couple of more tie-ins across the top um, yeah so this is gonna make a lovely little feature especially when there's an LED just above it and we can light up inside there so that what I have found is that the contact adhesive does work quite well. Um, Alright, the super glue is good, but it just takes too long. But with the contact adhesive, it just seems to work quite well. Um, so I've, I've used that for the last few pieces. So as you can see, I'm just putting in some diagonal braces to finish this off I've so I've added gone. some extra um, bracing to the roof and that finishes that off but there's just one last thing to do and that's to have some runners either side of the lift so on these two um, spans there I'll just glue that on the back so it looks like the when it's going up and down it's got some sort of rails um, to guide the lift up and down um, and what I'm using for that is some channel some 2.5 channel um, 100 width four pieces locked or item number 263 and uh, yep, so that will finish off this little delicate um, lift carcass as it is. We've still got the outer doors to do yet. 
Um, so I'll just make all these bits up as a sub-assembly so when I do come to build the station this is just ready to just drop in place. And now we move on to the painting of this lift. Um, I've decided to do all the mesh in silver and all the framework in black. Um, I've looked at as many photographs as I can of these um, iron type lifts and they come in various colours. Um, the doors or the gates at the back are either white, silver or just black. So I'm trying to break up the colours a little bit so we've got a little bit of variety otherwise we're just going to end up with one colour. So I've done the mesh silver and what I'll do is the handle at the back there um, I will do in a brass. That's that little tiny handle there at the back. I'll do that in brass if we can just see it. There it is. So I'll do that brass and all the framework I'll do in black. The control control panels I will leave silver and I'll just add some little tiny dots for the buttons and um, I think once that's painted it will look uh, yeah interesting to, to say the least. A little bit um, I've painted the framework on the inside now the handles and the control panels as you can see and it is beginning to take shape. I've still got the flooring left to do and um, yet again with this build we probably won't see half of this um, because it's going to be surrounded by two walls and all we're going to be able to see is that inside there um, you're not going to see any of this detail on the top the bracketry or anything like that unless I use the dentist's mirror and look at it from inside and look up but uh, <laughs> but we know it's there don't we that's the lift finished um, as you can see it's all painted there's a couple of areas that I've left without the paint on um, for instance these channels I've left them because I'm going to use them to stick to the building uh, once we've made the building the same goes for that side and I've left that unpainted as well just inside there the reason being although the lift is finished we've still got a couple of doors to make moving on to the missing doors now the door that is closed on the opposite side of the lift that's going to be really straightforward to make um, so I've cut a piece of plastic card and I've left a 2 mm um, line all the way around this um, door um, the reason being is because that's going to be glued onto a separate frame now I'm not going to make the frames up just yet because um, well we haven't got the building to stick the lift to so all I'm doing is just making the door fascia so we've got another piece of 0.8 strip cover this is going to be the, the piece that the handle is going to be glued onto so that's going to be butted up against that 2 mil edge so we'll glue that on and then what we'll do is every 4 mil or so we'll put in another strip and then it'll look like the concertina door is closed. So this is what I was talking about with the closed door. Um, yeah, as you can see, all I've done is added strips of plastic strip and the door handle. And if you look closely, you can see a window there. And that's just to see uh, where the lift is as it comes up. You know, if, if I do this with my finger, you can see, oh yeah, the lift is coming up. See what I mean? If you look closely through that, now you see that on some of these um, industrial lifts. Um, yep, so I've left the edge white and that's ready to be framed. Uh, all I've got to do now is once this 
blue is dried is on the back side is paint that silver so that when it is fitted um, to the back of the lift you don't see the white you see the, the silver back uh, in the background so that's the closed door so it's quite easy that one now the door the sliding door where it's open what I'm going to do with that is just cut this narrow strip there of eight millimeters scribe loads of lines on it and then on the back side that's inside the lift I'll just stick another handle on and then we'll glue that into the, the lift and that's the door that's inside the lift what I'm doing for the door that's open um, is I'm using a little bit of card and I'm folding it into two and a half mil segments as you can see there and if we pull that last last one back where the handle's gonna go you can actually see a hole there that's where the window's gonna be so if you can imagine when this is all constantine at back like so and all you would see is that like that if you know what I mean because this door will be open and in order to keep it open because <laughs> once you've compressed the card it wants to spring out so all I'm doing is I'm running some super glue in these crevices of the folds so that the door will stay together like that to create the folds I'm just using my fingernail um, roughly measuring where the last fold was and just pressing it there and then pressing it at the top and then just making an indent all the way along and once you're happy with it then you just fold it over so I've got to do eight of these to cover the distance of the 12 feet as it were while well, waiting for the paint to dry might as well start the doors and windows this is where we normally start when we come to do a new building so I'm using smart smart models doors and windows I've used them in the past I used them on the South Shields build and the Jarrah Road build but I'm using different windows and doors this time uh, these are LC06A uh, they've got a curved top to them so that will add a uh, unique style to the um, building um, they're quite thin these so I'm going to super glue two together give them that little bit of thickness and um, so I can push them through the card when I cut out hopefully without them uh, snapping but uh, so yeah this, this should work out quite well and uh, the doors I'm using are LC17. This is slightly narrow again um, due to uh, restrictions in space again. Um, these are quite flimsy so what I'll do is I'll probably glue these together and make a frame to go around them um, like I normally do. But um, yeah, time to get cracking. A little bit as you can see I've been very busy with door assemblies um, I just want to show you the lift um, as you can see I've added the internal door to this side as you can see it's been pulled closed and uh, it normally has hinges on this so you could push it in at 90 degrees and then close it after you after you've got whatever you need to go into the lift so that's the inner door so that's almost finished that's ready to go onto the platform now the two outer doors have now got frames on so this one is closed so this will go on on that side and, uh, this one is the open door which has been um, pulled right open Constantine it if you like um, 
So I've added a couple of strengthening bits there which will get trimmed back when it gets mounted into the building. So there, so that's where we are with the doors. Um, so let's have a, a look at one of the photographs of Tyne Dog, probably the best photograph which shows you the doors and windows. Um, and judging by what I've got here in front of us, I think these doors and windows will fit in quite nicely with the build, especially that door there. As you can see, the window's been boarded up at the top, and we have the curved windows there as well, which are uh, this type. And I've put a little sill on. Uh, like we have in a photograph and uh, yeah so that's where we are I have decided to make these doors more interesting to look at um, can you spot the difference with this window here I've arched it slightly with a Dremel and that looks a lot better than this one just being square. Not only that, it looks out of proportion. So all I'm doing is I've pre-marked this one and it's not a lot so I'm just using the Dremel to take that pencil line out. I don't know if you can see it, it's just a tiny bit and it just makes the door look more interesting. Now we move on to the windows. Uh, as you can see, I glue, always glue a little bit of a plastic card strip on the bottom there. It's only about uh, two and a half millimeters wide. And what that allows me to do, because there's an edge on the back, I just slide it up against the card and it won't move while I'm painting the front face because that's all I ever do on these is just paint the front face and then once I'm done with the window painting I just knock it off off this piece of card and put it onto a piece of tissue to dry just make sure I get the insides and it just stops it from moving around as you can see, I've more or less finished all the doors. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to add some doorknobs to these doors. Uh, as you can see, I've paired them up because um, obviously on one side of the station building and the other side of the station building is going to have the same amount of doors. So I've paired them up to have their doorknobs fitted left and right handed. So I'm using a, a knob. 0.8 drilling just about to see it and I'm coming up roughly about uh, let's see about 11 millimeters up from the bottom of the door just there and uh, I shall pop a hole through there and what I'll do then is I'll super glue a fine scale pin, track pin, quite thin. You may have seen me done this, do this before. And then I'll drop that in and then super glue that in from the back. And then we've got a doorknob. And then we'll just cut off the actual pin flush with the door. So I've added me super glue, so I'm just going to let that go off. And then we'll just cut that flush and uh, we'll do all the cutting together so we'll just leave that glue to dry so that's well that took a while uh, that's that's the doors painted uh, the frames both sides and the doors painted both sides all I've got to do is add glazing once the paint has dried um, so let's head over to Tyne Dock Station we're nearly at the end of another video. I thought I'd show you this entrance again. 
So it's a little bit different this week as we focus on some of the major details of the station. As you know, we always tend to build the doors and windows. But in this case, we've built the lift as well. And um, I think that's going to fit in there quite nicely. It just leaves enough room for a small porter's office just about here. And then the rest of the space between there and the end of the handrail here, or the balustrade here, will be the refreshments room. And then obviously we'll have the, the gents here. So I've got a little bit of an idea what I want to do in this area. And um, the other area I've still got to work it out yet. So some of the doors and windows are finished um, those windows there are not enough I need the same amount again and some um, before we start the building but hopefully we'll get them done next week and then we can focus on the design and the drawing of the two buildings because it is two buildings um, attached um, here with uh, an arch and some pillars or something I'm not sure but um, what I'm doing here is something I've got to work out I've got to work out some sizes and measurements and uh, and some ideas of what I'm going to do there to bring the two buildings together to make it look like a single building but um, that's for a another video right so I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and um, it's been an uplifting experience. Take care everybody. Bye for now. Bye.